Welcome aboard, everybody. I almost forgot. It's 9 o'clock. Oh, I didn't know if it's a.m. or p.m., but it's a.m., and good morning to you all. Welcome aboard. Ohio against the uh, Angels fan. Ohio Angels fan is here early. Nice to have you aboard, along with Greg and Ray K and SP fan. And uh, open the doors, Greg, because here we come. Okay, uh, today we're going to talk about uh, the St. Louis Cardinals. The car and they haven't done anything. You know, they uh, when they had Ozuna, they still needed a bat in the middle of the order, and um, then they lost Ozuna, and now they still need a bat. Now they need two bats in the middle of the order. I don't know what they're going to do, but we'll talk about the Cardinals in a little bit. Donkey Oki has joined us. Ray K has joined us. Guess Sue has joined us. George will be here late, but uh, that's okay. Uh, because George is uh, always here, no matter what. Okay, uh, you know, I've always talked about this. It's the teams that lose one-run games. The teams that win one-run games uh, generally improve the next year. It generally balances out the following year. And if you take the position that the New York, that the New York, the San Francisco Giants won 77 games last year and nearly half of them were by one run. This could be a monster disaster year, but the teams with the lowest one and loss percentage in games decided by one run last season, the Orioles were the worst. They were 11 and 22. So, uh, you know, it wouldn't surprise me if the Orioles improved a little bit. The Marlins were 16 and 28, and I think the Marlins are going to have a very, uh, I don't think they're going to be doormats this year. Kansas City, 15 and 25. The Tigers, 14 and 22. But here are two teams that had terrible, terrible luck last year with one run games. You had the Cubs, 19 and 20. 27 and the Cincinnati Reds 24 and 33 and how many times have we said let's go bet on the Cincinnati Reds okay the teams with the most runs decided by one run last year uh were the Reds 57 games okay so let's see if the Cincinnati Reds can do it now the all unemployed pitching staff it's getting a little thin. You got Kashner, you got Huli Shachin, you got Vargas, you got McHugh, uh, another guy that the Mets gave away, Hellickson, the bullpen, you got Strop, who was just uh, signed by Cincinnati, so take him off, Vizcaino, Dyson, Swart, uh, there's not much here, not much here. And then you got the lottery tickets, the health guys. Aaron Sanchez with the blisters and stuff, Taiwan Walker, and Danny Salazar. And the all-unemployed team, Alonzo and Adams at first base, Kipnis, Dozier, Gannett at second, uh, Addison Russell still unemployed, Mercer was just signed by, by Pittsburgh, Kong and Prado in, the, in, le, in at third base, uh, Hunter Pence looks like he's signing with San Francisco, Hamilton, Leonis Martin, Yasiel Puig in cargo, Jonathan Lucroy, Trumbo, Morales. There you go. So, uh, got an, uh, still has, a, you know, still got a little action going on. Still to be a little action going on in Major League Baseball. Okay? Uh, so, uh, that's how we, that's pretty much what we do. Okay. Uh, good morning to Mitchell Harston. The Angels should take a flyer on Colin McHugh. I absolutely agree. Kevin Hastings has joined us. Chris Gallo is here. Uh, Phil Chaplin, the wonderfully talented Phil. Uh, and Traveler, great stuff. Yeah, I think Freeze did retire. Uh, so some great stuff. Now, Mike Trout. Here's an interesting stat. Mike Trout could have gone hitless. In his final 400 at bats last year, and he'd still have a career, uh, a higher career slugging percentage than Mookie Betts. <laughs> Same thing with Chris Bryant, Bryce Harper, Josh Donaldson, and even Christian Yelich. Mike Trout, put him in the Hall of Fame now. How about that? 
Pedro Strop, as I mentioned, signed with the Cincinnati Reds. Wilmer Flores is still out there. Okay? He's an excellent guy. He's got good makeup. He was sneaky good with the Diamondbacks. Here's a guy who hit 317 with, uh, all right, and and you got uh, uh, Kevin Pillar, Brock Holt, uh, Domingo Santana. So those are a couple of more free Asian guys, okay, uh, out there. And, you know, look, it's going to be pretty interesting to see. Jordy Mercer, as I said, signed with the Tigers. Matt Duffy signed with the Texas Rangers. Uh, Yoshiani uh, Hirano with the Mariners. So uh, that could be pretty interesting. Now let's talk about the Mookie Betts. The uh, Dodgers talking with Boston about a possible mega deal. And I will tell you, the most significant money obligation they have in baseball opportunity, uh, it, it's it, it's the Dodgers. They uh, Look, it's the Dodgers. The most they owe any individual player is $46 million to Clayton Kershaw. Gives them a ton of flexibility uh, money-wise. And Mookie Betts, he'll become a free agent after 2020. The Red Sox have tried to extend his contract. They couldn't do it. He'll earn $27 million this year. He agreed earlier this month to avoid arbitration. So in, in Boston, they're talking that they offered him a ton of money, and he rejected, wanted more. All right, so the Red Sox, of course... They're still in talks with San Diego. You kind of look. I know we talk about the Mookie Betts every day, but uh, until we get into the actual position analysis, uh, what's more important than talking about Mookie Betts, the 2018 American League MVP? Okay, last year, 295, hit just under 30 homers, 90 RBIs. I put up a post on social media saying that Major League ba- and here's the thing, I put up this poll, I'll get to you in a second, and uh, of course to try to include uh, David Price to save money, he has three years, $96 million left, left wrist, ailed him in the past, elbow injuries of limited price, 63 starts in his last three seasons, but in four years in Pittsburgh, uh, in Boston, uh, David Price is 46-24 and 24 with a three eight four. So uh, that's what they're trying to do. I put up a post on social media. Major League Baseball has been campaigning for so many years now, okay? Campaigning so many years to do, uh, to shorten the games. The games are too long. We've got to shorten the games, right? And now they're proposing, and they believe that it'll happen, uh, Mitchell Harston says Betts is overrated. Dennis Timko is here, okay? That's right. He had surgery yesterday. I hope you're feeling better, Dennis. Leg and ankle still numb. Uh, nice to have you here. Dennis Timko, one of the nice guys. And, of course, his terrific son, who will be a major league ball player. So he'll be a first-round pick soon. You'll see. Great ball player. Met him personally. Got his autograph. And uh, just a terrific kid. Unholy Toledo has joined us. Good morning. Uh, so I put up, so now they want to do the uh, uh, DH in the National League. And what does that do? That only that lengthens games. <laughs> so, that, so they want to shorten games, and then so they, now they campaigning towards the DH in the National League. They believe it's inevitable part of the uh, contract, the uh, CBA agreement, okay? So we'll see how that goes. So, uh, all right, so the Dodgers, don't forget, they missed out on Garrett Cole. They uh, they tried to get Josh Donaldson, okay? They tried to get Josh Donaldson. They tried to get Blake Trinan, Alex Wood. Well, they got Blake. They got Jimmy Nelson, okay? They wanted to get uh, Betts. Betts is not the only option. Uh, The Dodgers have been rumored to try to get Chris Bryant. Trade talks with Bryant were absolutely in a holding pattern before the uh, decision to uh, by the arbitrator to give Bryant two years of um, eligibility. So the Dodgers were interested in Francisco Lindor. 
They also wanted Mike Clevenger. That's why the Dodgers have been around. You know, they're chomping at the bit. They're just circling the wagons. And um, now it's up to the Dodgers to go ahead and possibly get Mookie Betts. And so don't think that this is not going to happen, okay? Don't think it's not going to happen. Now, since Mookie Betts, uh, since 2015, a look at the career leaders among outfielders since the start of the 2015 season, Mookie Betts is seventh in home runs, tied with Justin Upton. He is uh, second in war. Trout's 44-9, Betts is 39-7. Mookie Betts, OPS, he's seventh. And I'm talking about Trout, Martinez, Judge, Harper, Stanton, Yelich. Mookie Betts is tied for seventh with Jonas Cespedes. How about that one? So the Red Sox and the Dodgers, I have heard they are deep in talks. The Dodgers have a range of young players attractive to Boston. The key seems to be Alex Verdugo. As I I mentioned him, Alex Verdugo, uh, he's really Alex Verdugo. Dustin May, there's a couple of others. So uh, it's going to happen. I've been told it's going to happen. Betts has 700-plus plate appearances three of the last four years. And, um, and, And that's a big part of his value. The Dodgers haven't had a single player to get 700 plate appearances since 2007. Okay, 2007. The leadoff spot for Boston generated about 46 more plate appearances the last few seasons in San Diego. So uh, Mookie's going to have to play. And, of course, as I said the other day, if Mookie Betts becomes a Dodger, Cody Bellinger will be the Dodgers' center fielder, and Betts will play right field. Absolutely. And then what happens if Mookie Betts is traded? That's a good one there. What happens if Mookie Betts is traded? What happens to the American League East? The American League East, the Yankees right now are about even money to win the American League pennant. The Red Sox are about 12 to 1. The Yankees will become the prohibitive favorite, but in terms of fantasy baseball, uh, Here's what you got to look at when you look at the Yankees. It's not just the Red Sox losses, but Giancarlo Stanton, okay? Uh, Giancarlo Stanton, uh, look, you can't underestimate the disaster of Giancarlo Stanton's 2019 season, okay? Um, Absolutely. He's 30 years old. He needs to avoid a repeat of last year. And that puts a lot of heat on the Yankees' new. The Yankees have a new medical and training staff. So let's see what happens there. Then you got Miguel Andahar, his right shoulder intact after last year's uh, uh, season ruining surgery. Had surgery, ruined the whole season. If he clears the hurdle of the shoulder, how does he fit onto the Yankee roster with Gio Rochella? taking the starting third base job last year. Uh, when you grade Andohar, you don't do it by his play at third base only, but take a look at him as a first baseman and left field. And with the rosters expanding to 26, Andohar can provide, he can really provide a lot more value with his versatility. Don't forget, Yankees didn't have Severino last year. They got him this year. The Yankees didn't have Stanton last year. They got him this year. The Yankees didn't have Garrett Cole last year. They got him this year. Let's see if Cole can build, okay, on on whatever he's done. Um, he's coming off a 2019 year where he had 249 innings. That's combined. You take the playoffs and the regular season. Excuse me, he had 249 innings. So the Yankees, chances are they're going to they're gonna go easy on Garrett Cole coming out of the gate. Now, Clint Frazier. Holy cow, I can't believe he's still a Yankee. And he'll be on the opening day roster. Um, 
He's going to need a strong showing in spring training. He's got to improve.